We begin the story of embryonic development at day 14 in a woman's menstrual cycle. When the oocyte is ovulated out into the peritoneum, that's the oocyte being projected out into the abdominal pelvic cavity because the uterine tube and the ovary are not physically connected to each other. So the oocyte needs to be swept up into the distal end of the uterine tube called the ampulla. And at this point, the oocyte is surrounded by a thick non-cellular structure called the zona pellucida. And the oocyte the oocyte itself is arrested at the second metaphase of the meiosis. And this second phase of meiosis will not complete until the fertilization occurs, where the genetic material from the spermatocyte is present within the cytoplasm of the oocyte. The follicular cells that are left over after the oocyte has been ovulated kind of collapse onto themselves and form this large cellular structure in the ovary called the corpus luteum which translates directly to a yellow body. And this yellow color comes from the lipid-rich steroid hormones, the estrogen and progesterone that the corpus luteum secretes. These two hormones simulate the endometrial lining, which is the innermost layer of the uterus, to start to thicken and its glands to secrete nutritious fluids into the uterine cavity in preparation for the potentially fertilized oocyte, aka the conceptus, to arrive. And at this time, should there be any spermatozoa that are present in the female reproductive tract, the spermatozoa will swim their way towards the oocyte, which is a form of a chemotaxis. And once they encounter an oocyte, they will start to break through the zona pellucida in order to fertilize the oocyte. So when we draw out that oocyte, we would see the oocyte that's arrested at the metaphase 2 and the spermatozoa that are crowding this oocyte complex. And once one of these spermatozoa is successful at injecting its nuclear content into the oocyte cytoplasm, that initiates the metaphase 2 to precede its cell division. And the completion of meiosis 2 will result in unequal division of the cell into one proper oocyte and a smaller daughter cell called the polar body. This polar body will eventually just degenerate and the nuclear content of the oocyte and that of the spermatozoa will eventually fuse to form a single nucleus, thus forming a diploid single cellular conceptus known as the zygote. This marks day zero in the development of the conceptus. And day zero in the conceptus' development equates to day 14 in a woman's menstrual cycle. So the fertilization and the formation of the zygote happens in the ampulla of the uterine tube. And in the next five days or so, this conceptus will slowly make its way into the uterus where the growth of the embryo and later on the fetus can be supported. And during this five-day period of transportation, the zygote doesn't just stay as a single cell cellular organism. The zygote starts to undergo cell division by mitosis. So by day one, the conceptus is now comprised of two identical daughter cells. And of course, day one in conceptus' development equates to day 15 in a woman's menstrual cycle. By day two, another round of cell division by mitosis has occurred. So the two cells became four cells. Day two in the conceptus development is day 16 in a woman's menstrual cycle. Another 24 hours, so day 3, another cell division results in the conceptus that's comprised of now 8 smaller cells still, still confined within the zona pellucida. The day 17 in a woman's menstrual cycle. And at this point, it's worth noting that with every cell division, each daughter cell is becoming smaller and smaller. So such a cell division that results in smaller and smaller cell size while doubling in the cell number is called the cleavage. Day 4 is no different. Another round of cleavage will result in a conceptus that's made up of now 16 smaller daughter cells. So we're getting quite crowded here, confined within the zona pellucida. Day 4 equating to day 18 
happening in a woman's menstrual cycle now. At this point, the conceptus between day three and four starting to look like cluster of small cells. And early embryologists thought that this conceptus resembles a mulberry. So for this reason, the conceptus during days three and four in their development is also called the morula. By about day four, the cells of the conceptus is now starting to specialize or differentiate already. So there are cells that are forming the outer compartment of this cluster of cells, and these are called the outer cell mass, also known as the trophoblasts. These are the feeder cells, and the cells that are kind of clustered within the center are starting to specialize as well, and these cells are called the inner cell mass, also known as the embryoblasts. And as the name suggests, the embryoblasts will give rise to the actual embryo. All right, day five. Finally, we've arrived into the uterine cavity. And due to a lot of these endometrial glands that have been secreting nutritious fluids, the conceptus will start to accumulate fluids. So looking at the day five conceptus at a higher magnification, if you will, and you guessed it, this is day 19 in menstrual cycle. And here, the fluid in the uterus will start to infiltrate into the morula. So the embryoblast will kind of pull to one pole of the conceptus, while the trophoblasts flatten out just inside the zona pellucida. So the cystic form of the conceptus at day 5 is no longer called the morula. This no longer looks like a mulberry, but instead a cyst. So we call this the blastocyst. Day 6 in conceptus development and 20 days in a menstrual cycle. At this time point, the zona pellucida has weakened quite significantly. So the zona pellucida starts to degrade and the blastocyst is now free of that restrictive, tough capsule. This allows a couple of things. It allows the blastocyst to accumulate a little more fluid and become larger. And also it allows the sticky trophoblasts to actually come in contact with the endometrial lining. This allows the eventual implantation of the conceptus into the endometrium. And this is exactly what happens at day 7. The conceptus comes in contact with the endometrial lining and it starts to embed into the endometrium. So this is day 7 and day 21 in menstrual cycle. So 3 weeks into a woman's menstrual cycle. The embedding of the conceptus occurs by a specialized population of cells that emerge from the trophoblasts. And these purple cells are called the syncytial trophoblasts. These are particularly invasive cells that can break down the epithelial lining and the stromal tissues of the endometrium. What is left of the trophoblast is now called the cytotrophoblasts. And these are the cells that continue to divide and give rise to the syncytial trophoblasts. In addition to being super invasive, the syncytial trophoblasts start to release a hormone called the human chorionic gonadotropin. And this hormone is important in stimulating the corpus luteum that is still active and remaining in the ovary to continue to thrive and produce the estrogen and progesterone, which then go on to continue to stimulate the endometrium to not only remain, but continue to secrete their glandular secretions. Without this positive feedback loop, the corpus luteum will wither and eventually degrade away in about three to five more days, at which point then the estrogen and progesterone levels would drop, thereby causing the endometrium to shed, initiating the menstruation. So in the event of successful fertilization and implantation of the conceptus by day 7, the production of HCG by the syncytial trophoblasts would ensure that the endometrium does not shed, taking along the conceptus.